Hello and welcome to this another video lesson. This is the video lesson for increased investigation and immersion. And I am Sir Feats, your ultimate teach guy, and welcome to Feats Talks. And here are the objectives of our lesson. First objective is the introduction of the course. And of course, give an overview regarding with the class research agenda. Third objective is to discuss the IMRAD or article format. And the fourth objective, discuss the statement of the problem. And lastly, will be the discussion about the review of related literature. But first thing first, what is increased investigation and immersion? Increased investigations and immersion is the culmination of the quantitative and qualitative research. It means that this will be the finale of all the research subject in the senior high school curriculum. At the same time, this subject will be a form of innovation wherein you need to improve or create a particular system process or product. At the same time, for this subject, you need to create a prototype. And of course, this will be an application of what you have learned from the research subject and of course, to the curriculum that you have taken, specifically your strand. But what is the meaning of innovation? Innovation is the process of transforming, modifying, or changing of the following. It can be a process of transforming or modifying of changes that you have studied from the different subjects that you have taken in your particular strand. Also, it can be an improvement of system or transforming a system. And this will also act as a production of a output or product. And of course, this will also an innovation or transforming of new ideas. And lastly, will be regarding with the programs that might have a good impact to the community. Remember also that triple I or increase investigation and immersion is also a prototype based research. It means that it is an application or approach utilized to have an innovative outcome based on the problem that you are studying. It is also an approach wherein the learners should create an innovative output based on the input that they have gathered from the review of related literature. What is the meaning of prototype? Prototype is an early sample model or release of a product as an improvement of a process. We can also say that a prototype is the simply a plan of what you have wanted to implement or to improve in a particular system, processes, or programs. What is now the differences and similarities between the three research subjects in the senior high school curriculum? Just a point of review, you have three major research subjects in the senior high school. You have PR1, PR2, and of course, the triple I. PR1 encompasses the study of the qualitative research. For PR2, will be regarding with quantitative research. And for triple I, will be a prototype-based research. So what is now the differences between the three research subjects? PR1 intends to create hypotheses or interprets phenomena, while for PR2, it intends to generalize or validate truth and hypothesis. While for III, this will have a creation of new products that can become beneficial to the society. So what is the framework of inquiries, investigation, and immersion? When we say framework, what is now the guidelines or the baseline of this particular subject? The main approach of this subject is what we call the design thinking model, wherein it encourages to create products relevant to the society. Basically, design thinking has five major steps. The design thinking process has five major steps. That is to empathize, to define, to ideate, to prototyping, and of course, to test. To empathize means that we need to connect with the people. What is the experience of the people regarding with the problem? Also, you can also put yourself to the shoes of others 
to relate on what kind of problem they are experiencing. On that manner, you can have a good research problem. And the next step is to define it. In defining it, you need to collect and combine all the information gathered regarding on the problem that you have collected. And of course, the third step will be to ideate. Ideate means to think for all of the solutions possible for that particular problem. And prototyping, which is now the creation of the product. After knowing what is the problem and what are the information regarding on that problem, it is now time to create product or solution or program related to the problem. And that process is what we call prototyping. And lastly will be the testing. For the testing, you need to measure and of course, to assess the efficacy of your product or the effectivity of your product. So on that manner, triple I will be concluded. Our next point of concern is what is our research agenda? So a research agenda is the collection of research topics that will be our guide in creating specific topic for your research. It also means that this research agenda will act as your guidelines or your standard in finding topics or problem on your particular strand. I will show to you some example of research agenda for your strand. Here, an example of those topics under the strand of STEM ABM, and of course, for Humes. For STEM, you have basic innovation and hard innovation. Basic innovation, which means this is the easiest topic for the triple I subject. While for hard innovations, these are the innovations that needs extreme time, of course, resources, and money to suffice the conduct of this particular research. For STEM, they need to focus to the following topic agriculture, person with disability, household, business tech, personal safety and security, climate change mitigation, quality of socialization, learning materials for STEM students, DRM or disaster and risk management, environmental sustainability. For hard innovation, they can create research regarding with anti-cancer, chemoanalysis, biosynthesis, environmental remediation, nanotech, for agriculture and mathematical postulations. For ABM, their basic innovation will be regarding with new systems and improvement of processes, such as in financial management, marketing, human resource management, CSR or corporate social responsibility or work accessibility. For innovation, they need to have new profitable product in cooperation with STEM and of course, their startup project, or also known as the business simulation. They can also cooperate with young students to create a particular good example of startup project. For Yums, they have the basic innovation of new system and improvement of processes such as social services, communication, learning process, philosophical theories, and sociological theories. For hard innovation, they can create different social experiments. Of course, they need cooperation with STEM or ABM to study socialization and, of course, societal progress. Our next point of concern is the IMRAD or the article format. So what is this particular format? IMRAD or article format is the shorthand version of the complete research paper. It composes only the following parts, the abstract of the study, the introduction, methodology, results, discussion, and of course, the recommendations. That's why it is called IMRAD because it focuses only to the following components stated. At the same time, IMRAD is also known as article format because this is what you see to the different article journal on the internet or on the Google Scholar. Okay, you have Google Scholar. Of course, you also have PLOS One and Science Direct. This is an example of different sources or resources that we can get different article or research articles essential for our paper. You will see an attachment of 
the sample article format of the research paper on our FLMS. Our next point of concern is to how to write the statement of the problem. Remember that the statement of the problem is the heart of the research paper because it composed of the important details regarding, of your, regarding to your paper, such as regarding to the problem and to the research question. At the same time, this is also the portion of the paper that describes and specified the central question and, of course, the research question or the specific questions. Of course, on the statement of the problem, the primary part or component of that is the research question. But what do you need to do in the research question? Remember the following concept that I will state. First one is regarding with the variable, what is IV and of course, what is DV or the independent variable or the dependent variable. It is very important that on your research question, it indicates what is IV and the DV. The next aspect is SMART, also known as Specific, Measurable, Attainable, rele Relevant, and Time-Bound. Make sure that your research question should follow the following criteria. And of course, the central idea of the particular problem. This will be the main point of your investigation. This central idea can be also called as the central, the central question of your research paper. The next component of the research paper is the hypothesis. Hypothesis is the statement indicating your assumption, possibilities, and the tentative results. Remember that not all research paper has a hypothesis. So those research paper that doesn't have hypothesis is also known as the descriptive research. While for with hypothesis, these are the research paper under the correlation, cause and effect relationship, quasi-experimental, and experimental. So therefore, when you are writing your research paper, you should know what type of research paper that you are doing. So with that, you also know when to write a hypothesis. The next part of the research paper is what we call the review of related literature. But how to write this particular component? RRL also known as the Review of Related Literature, is the collection of data, information, and previous studies relevant to your topic. This will also act as the framework of your study. It means that this will be the backbone of your problem. Without this, your research paper will be shallow. This will also act as the basis of your paper that will deepen the understanding regarding with the problem. Remember that in creating RRL, you need to have a good collection of review of related literature. So how to find this? You should also know what are the legitimate sites that we can get a resources such as a legit review of related literature. Second is also you can use RRL matrix for this particular step. So RRL matrix is a table of collected review of related literature, which can be beneficial for the creation of the review of related literature in your research paper. Take note that before creating the RRL matrix, you should first create a concept map of all related concepts to your paper. So how? These are the following steps in creating your concept map. First step is to identify the central topic first. The second one will be the enumeration of all subtopic or the specific topic related to the central topic. This will be your point of reference or the scope and limitation of your research. But remember, this is not the scope and the limitation which is part of the research paper. You are scoping or you are identifying what are the topics under your particular problem. And the third step is to make sure that each sub subtopics are well supported by different sources or review of related literature. So I will be showing to you an example on how to create a concept map before you create an RRL matrix. So let's have this example. So for this example, 
The title is Relationship of Health Services Offered by Healthcare Institution in the Satisfaction of Their Patient. First thing first, you need to identify what are the central topic or central idea on your research paper. For this particular example, it have two central idea. The first idea is the health services and the second idea is the satisfaction of the patient. This particular idea or central idea is also known as the IV or the DV. The IV is the independent variable while the DV is the dependent variable. Remember that the independent variable is the variable that can be manipulated. While for the dependent variable, this is the variable that receive the impact of manipulation from the independent variable. After you have identified the central idea, you can now start conceptualizing. What are the different subtopics which is relevant to the IV and of course to the DV? So let's give some example. First one. So for IV health services, you can search or collect information regarding with the different types of services offered in a healthcare institution. Also, you can research a particular RRL regarding with the quality of services being offered in a healthcare institution. While for DV, you can have the subtopic of standards for patient's care and patient's needs. So these are an example of concept mapping. In summary, so once again, that is our concept map. As you can see, you have the IV and the DV, which have the following subtopics. So the subtopics is, that, is there, the types of services, quality of services, standards for patient's care, and patient's needs. This particular subtopic will be your point of reference or the focus of collecting the RRL. On this manner, you will not be lost in creating or collecting the information because in collecting the information, it is very important that you have keywords. And this keywords is also known as the subtopic. Topics. So while you are collecting a review of related literature, you can use this subtopic as keyword in searching or collecting a review of related literatures. Don't forget that you don't need to identify your IV and DV if you are performing a descriptive research. Okay, remember that one. Now we can move in creating the RRL matrix. Now that you have the concept map, you're already guided on what is the keywords to be collected for your RRL matrix. On that manner, your research related literature will be narrowed down, okay? So this is the content of the RRL matrix. First one is the title of the article that you have collected, the publication date, the author, the publisher or the URL, the summary of the article, relationship to the topic, and of course, the type of that particular RRL. Don't worry because on your particular activity, all of the guide questions are indicated to that template. Remember also that you need to collect at least 20 articles distributed from the different subtopics that you have collected or created. The next condition is to follow the guide question provided in the template. Use your own words in creating the summary and, of course, the relationship to the study. And also, you need to identify the type of sources for that particular RRL or article. So here are the guide questions for the relationship to the topic. So this is one of the content in the review of related literature matrix. First guide question is that, why is the article related to your study? You need to explain or to justify what is the relationship of this article to your research problem and how this research article will help you to solve the research problem. Second guide question will be the impact of this article to your study. What do you think will be the benefit 
of that research article to your research problem. And of course, what are the loopholes to the articles you have read? Loopholes means the gap or the discrepancy to the research results on that particular reading. You can use these loopholes to identify what are the possible gap or the possible solution to be given or to have an intervention on that research problem. So that's it. I think you are ready now in creating the activities on this particular lesson. So be ready for the activities that will be posted on your FLMS. For this two week, you need to accomplish three tasks. The first task is about the concept mapping, the statement of the problem, and of course, the RRL matrix. If you have any problem, don't hesitate to call the attention of your subject teacher. So I hope that you are ready and you have learned something from this video lesson. This will be the end of this lesson and thank you so much for listening.